Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health bringing you another episode of Science Powered Fitness. And today we're gonna to talk about self myofascial release. And really what is it and what do you use it for and when is it appropriate? So before we jump into it, let's just break that word down, self myofascial release. So that's again, doing a technique to yourself and it's again, dealing with uh, myosin or again, the muscle fibers and the fascial fibers of the body. So you've got these different fibers that make up the structure of your muscle. Some are active, some are passive. Again, the active is the actual contractile component of the tissue. And then we've got this fascial webbing, scar tissueing that can develop that really creates this intrinsic fortification that allows your body to create tension from the muscle. And then through the fascial connection points or that connective tissue tethered to your tendon and to the bone structure and then actually advance the limb. So again, when we overuse a muscle or if it's always in a state of stretch tension, if we rip it, you can develop these fascial restrictions which really bind the muscle and keep it from getting to its full extensibility. And that's why you would start using devices like this, foam roller, foam ball, lacrosse ball, to actually get in there and start to break down these collagens and help to restore the length relationships. So again, what we do is we have different surface areas which allow us to create more or less pounds of pressure per square inch. So the broader the surface area, the more that you're gonna cover with that ball, and then it's gonna have less pressure. Now it's important to note that when you provoke the muscle by pushing so hard into it that there's pain, it typically is your body's way of telling you that there's trauma and you actually could be doing more harm than good. So when we do this, we wanna invoke a parasympathetic response, a calming influence on the muscle by allowing pressure to actually pull on the tendon until the reactive tension of the muscle subsides. You want the nervous system to relax before you start working on the tissue. It takes a little bit of time. So once you add pressure to it, it's called a passive inhibition or passive release. You're just sitting there and not moving. Now as you're doing that, you're also allowing the mechanical properties of these collagens to start to soften. So the pressure creates heat, and that heat breaks the collagens down, and then you can start to actively stretch the tissue through that fascia, which is then gonna, again, elongate it and try to reorganize it within the pattern of the muscle that you're targeting. Now the goal being, again, to decompress that tissue to, again, provide more circulation and blood flow, get some circulation and, and hydration back to that tissue Again, fascia can get dry and brittle and restricted as we get older, so it's good to keep it malleable and soft and, and again, hydrated, and this can help with that. Again, takeaways is that you would do this on tissue that has restrictions in, again, a structural or mechanical limitation. If there's a neural adaptation and the brain is just keeping the tension on the muscle, you're going to want to passively inhibit it with the pressure first, and then you can start to break down some of these collagens, start to work on length relationships. Any questions on these techniques, we do share these techniques in our classes here and show people how to identify if it's a neural reactive stretch issue or if it's a mechanical issue. It's a, again, a joint or a shortening of the muscle or again, a fascial restriction. You gotta know what you're dealing with and what you need to do for tools to fix it. And we'd like to show you that. So questions, let us know, admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. And remember your body's designed to move, stay in motion. We'll see you soon.